Okay guys, welcome to this video looking at year 8 standard index form and it's from the White Rose Maths website. So White Rose Maths are a fantastic website and resource website for Key Stage 1, Key Stage 2, Key Stage 3, GCSE and it even has some stuff I believe for post 16 maths so potentially for AS level maths as well okay so please do go ahead actually guys and if you get a chance in your spare time please check them out guys okay I'm not endorsed by them but they are a fantastic company okay and and they ha they have fantastic resources okay Okay, right guys, so feel free to obviously pause the video, okay, try and attempt all the questions or the ones you can do, and then come back and press play and grab your pen, pencil and notepad, okay, and feel free to make any notes from today's video. We're going to start with question number one, fill in the boxes to complete the statements. 10 to the power of something is 10 times 10 times 10, well I've got three tens there so it's going to be 10 to the power of 3. So I pronounce that as 10 to the power of 3 or you might hear teachers say 10 cubed okay or 10 to the power of 3. Okay, This is my power or exponent okay so this is what I raise it to. Okay, next one, 10 to the power of 5, 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. So I do that five times. Okay, next one, 10 to the power of 3 times 10 squared. Now the laws of indices state that if I have the same base and I'm multiplying, I just add the powers. So 3 plus 2 is 5. Okay, so make a note of that guys, so in general, x to the power of a times x to the power of b is x to the power of a plus b. Okay, provided that you have the same base, you would just add the powers together, okay, for that. Next one, 10 to the power of 7 times 10 to the power of something equals 10 to the power of 11. Well, working backwards, if I do 11 take away 7, I get 4. So 10 to the power of 7 times 10 to the power of 4, well, I would just add the powers. 7 plus 4 is 11. So that does confirm that my answer is correct. Question number two, write as ordinary numbers. So ordinary numbers just mean like normal numbers, like the number one or ten or a thousand. Okay, four times ten cubed. Well, ten cubed is ten times ten times ten, which is a thousand. Four times a thousand is four thousand. Okay, so ten cubed means ten times ten times ten, which is a thousand. Four lots of a thousand is four thousand. Next one, 3 times 10 to the minus 5. Well, the minus 5 here means that I'm going to have a decimal. Okay, so I'm going to have 0 0.00003. Okay, and I can just check 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so that does confirm my answer. So a negative index, okay, gives us a decimal answer and a positive index or a positive exponent gives us a large number okay and this is the whole idea of what standard form is it's just a mathematical way of writing really big numbers or really small numbers without having to write like 0 0.000000 okay etc etc or, or without writing like 4 trillion or 4 billion okay it writes it in like a mathematical form that is easy to understand Okay, next one, 8.9 times 10 to the 4, so I'm going to have 0 0.00089, okay, so let's just check here, 1, 2, 3, 4, yep, that confirms my answer is correct, okay. For that one question number three complete the statement using the greater than or smaller than well if i look here okay the power of 10 is bigger here so straight away i know that that's going to be bigger than that okay because if the power of 10 is bigger it doesn't necessarily matter what the start number is if the power here is bigger it means i'm going to have more zeros okay which means i'm going to have more place values 
where it's here, okay, the number is going to be slightly smaller because it's power of a six. Power of a six would be a million. This would be like a hundred million. Okay, so it'd be like yeah, hundred and twenty million. Whereas this would be like sixty-seven million, if that makes sense. Okay, or hundred, yeah, or hundred. Um, yeah, I, th I, th I think I said that right, actually, 120 million, I think. Okay. Um, next one, which one has, like, the bigger power? Well, here, we've got to be careful. This has a power of minus 1. That's bigger than minus 5. Remember that a negative, the smaller a negative, okay, the bigger the number, if that makes sense here. So, like, minus 1 is bigger than minus 5. Minus 5 is bigger than minus 9, etc., etc., on your number line. So, my answer is going to point in this direction. Question number 4. Work out the calculations, giving your answer as ordinary numbers. Well, 3 times 6, okay, is 18. So I'm going to have 18, and then I'm going to have 5 zeros after it, okay? Don't worry a lot, guys, about the pronunciation of these numbers, okay? Because although it is actually part of the GC specification, okay, as long as you get, like, the right number of digits here, how you pronounce it, obviously, it, it is actually partially important. But as long as you're happy that a million has six zeros and a billion has nine zeros and a trillion has 12, they are, like, the main one ones that you need to know okay if it goes past that then they'll never ask you what is the name of a number that has 15 zeros let's say okay as long as you are able to write the numbers here in the right way six divided by three is two two times ten cubed is going to be two thousand Okay, next one here, I've got to be careful, I've got to use bid maths here, so I've got to work out this bit first and then add 3, okay, 3 add, and then I believe I'm going to have 700,000, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so I'm going to have 7, 700,000, okay, and 3 guys, okay, so put in a comma there. Okay, so put in a comment there if you're interested. Okay, this one, again, using bid mass, I do 3 plus 7 is 10, so what's in the bracket first? 10 times 10 to the 5 is 10 to the 6. Okay, so I'm going to have 1 million. Okay, 10 to the power of 6 is pronounced as 1 million. Okay, 1 million has 6 zeros, guys. Okay. Question number five, Jack calculates um, 6 times 10 squared plus 3 times 10 cubed equals 9 times 10 to the 5. Explain Jack's mistake and write in the correct answer. Well, when you're adding, okay, in standard form, guys, first of all, I can't just add the numbers. It has to be in the same base power for me to add, okay? If I'm adding numbers in standard form, the powers need to be the same for me to add the numbers. Because the powers are different here, I can't just add them. Okay, however, I can change this to 0 0.6 times 10 cubed plus 3 times 10 cubed. And now it's in like the same exponents, like the same powers of 10. I can now add my numbers, okay? Because you have to think of adding as like a place value, okay? Think of it as you convert it to like an ordinary number, and then you would add the numbers together. And if you if you do that, it does not give you 9 times 10 to the 5. Okay, it gives you a number that's actually much smaller than that, okay? So, now it's in the same base, I can do 0 0.6 plus 0 plus 3, sorry, which is 3.6, 3 3.6 times 10 to the power of 3, okay, I don't add my powers here, I, I only add the powers if I'm multiplying, if I'm dividing, I would subtract the powers or subtract the exponents, okay, but if I'm adding or subtracting involving standard form, I need to convert it to either an ordinary number or change it so it's in like the same base power form, so it's in the same exponent form, i.e. the same power on that 10, Okay, so that's your answer in standard form, guys. But if you're interested, the ordinary number would be this number. Okay.
So that's your standard form. Okay, I'll label that as SF. And then this is your ordinary number in case you're wondering what that would come out as, as an ordinary number. Okay, ON for ordinary number. Question number six, we've got to show that question. So we'll start with the left hand side and then work out what the right hand side is. Okay, I'm timesing. So four times three is twelve. Okay, 10 to the power of 2 times 10 to the power of 3. Remember, if I'm multiplying, I'm going to add the powers. Okay, the times has to be here, though. Okay, 2 plus 3 is 5. Okay, so I have um, 12 times 10 to the 5, or 1.2 times 10 to the 6. Okay, I'm going to leave my answer like this, rather than write out the digits, okay, because I know that that would give me like a very big number, essentially, okay, next one here, on the right hand side, okay, I'm adding here, but the powers are the same, okay, so I'll just add the two numbers, 4.2 plus 7.8, okay, so our decimal addition, 2 plus 8 is 10, so 0 carry the 1, okay, put my decimal point there, sorry, 4 plus 7 is 11, plus the 1 is 12, so I get 12.0, or 12, and then I've got times 10 to the power of 5, which is exactly the number in this first one, so 12 times 10 to the power of 5, okay, therefore, both of these are equal, okay, so this number and this number are equal, okay, 12 times 10 to the power of 5 is equal to 12 times 10 to the power of 5, okay, I don't even have to bother changing it, okay, into standard form, but that's the same as 1.2 times 10 to the 6, okay, which definitely does confirm my answer, because 1.2 times 10 to the 6 is also equal to 1.2 times 10 to the 6, okay, Question number seven, guys. In a factory, three million chocolate bars are made every day. How many chocolate bars are made in a week? Well, a week has seven days. Okay. So, you would do three million times seven. Now, to make it a bit easier, I'm going to write three million in standard form. So, it's a number between one and ten. So, three times ten, and then I count the number of zeros if it's a positive number. I have six zeros, so three, three times ten to the six, and then I'm going to multiply that by seven, because there are seven days in a week, guys. Three times seven is twenty-one, so twenty-one times ten to the power of six which is the same as saying 2.1 times 10 to the power of 7. Remember that standard form, guys, has to be a number between 1 and 10 times 10 to the power of something. Okay, that something can be positive or negative. It doesn't really matter as long as the number here is between 1 and 10, okay, which it is. Okay, 21 is bigger than 10, so that... that I know straight away that that's not in standard form, okay? It's a number between 1 and 10 times 10 to the power of something, okay? This is question number 8, guys, okay? The last question for today's video, okay? Put these cards in ascending order, okay? It's got the capital H there, so it's aimed for, like, higher tier pupils or pupils that are trying to push themselves, okay, for the higher level, okay? So, this is looking at negative, yeah, and fractional powers, okay? Now, let's just start with this one here. So, 9 to the power of a half. Power of a half means a square root. So, the square root of 9 is equal to 3. 9 to the power of minus a half. Well, this minus a half just does the reciprocal. So, it's this number, but um, inverted. So, the answer would be 1 third. Okay, for that. Because it's 1 over 9 to the power of a half. Okay, so the minus does the reciprocal. It does the inverse. So 1 over 9 to the power of a half. And then it's 1 over the square root of 9, which is 1 over 3. This one's 9 to the power of minus 3. So this is actually 1 over 9 cubed. Which is 1 over 9 times 9 times 9. Which is actually 1 over 7 to 9. Okay, 
9 squared is 81, and then 81 times 9 is 729. Minus 9 to the power of 3, what's well, a minus, so it'd be minus 729. So arranging it from smallest to biggest, okay, ascending means smallest to biggest, okay, and descending means largest to smallest, okay, so smallest to largest, okay, it's minus 9 cubed, okay, then it's 9 to the power of minus 3, okay, because that's smaller than 1 third, okay, then it's 9 to the power of minus a half, and then it's, and then the last one is 9 to the power of a half, okay. So I apologize that I've like gone a bit quickly there, okay, but this is looking at fractional Okay, and negative powers. So power of a half in maths just means the square root. A negative exponent, a negative index, does the reciprocal. So you find the inverse of that number and or fraction. Okay, and then um, I just work out my answer from there. So 9 to the power of minus 3 just means 1 over 9 cubed, which, which is 1 over 9 times 9 times 9, which is 1 over 729. Minus 9 cubed means minus 9 times minus 9 times minus 9. Now, a little trick here. If you raise a number that is negative to an odd power, you will always get a, neg a negative number. Whereas if you raise... A negative to an even power, generally speaking, if it's in brackets, then you'll get like an even number. Okay, so that's how I got this minus 729. 9 to the power of a half just means the square root of 9. So the square root of 9 is 3 because 3 times 3 is 9 or 3 squared is, is 9. So 3 3 is a 9. And then 9 to the power of minus a half is 1 over 9 to the half, which is 1 over the square root of 9, which is equal to a third. Okay, or 1 over 3. Okay, right guys, that's the end of today's short, sharp video looking at year rate indices. If you found this useful, please hit that like button. Okay, please consider subscribing to the channel. So please help me grow my channel, okay, and help me reach more subscribers. Okay, and lastly, please click that bell icon so you are notified of when I upload for GCSE Maths, Key Stage 3 Maths, and also... AS level pure maths as well. Okay, but that's it for me today, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you for the next one. Okay, bye for now.